Good afternoon, everyone. I can see a lot of people joining in already. You're welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome to the Women Tech Stars Open Day Edition. This is another wonderful event. Um, and we're so glad to have you. As you join in, please um, let us know your name and what country you're joining in from. You can just um, write it in the chat box so that we get to meet you, your name and the country you're joining in from. Irene from Nigeria, you're welcome. Babarin Day from Nigeria. I can see Jane from Kenya. Jane, you're welcome. Uh, a, lot, a lot of people from Lagos, Nigeria. You're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. Welcome, ladies. Mary Jane from Kano, all the way from the north. You're yeah, welcome. Um, I can see Wakila from Nigeria. I can see Mimi from Enugu. Wow. Um, Eimoga Magdalene from Abuja. Fatima from Lagos. You're yeah, welcome. And we have Nomfudo from South Africa. Purity from Kenya. Um, Tifile from South Africa. Welcome, guys. It's a pleasure to have you on board, we have Miriam from Egypt. Oh, we are so glad to have people joining from all over the world. I mean, this means a lot, right? Thank you so much, guys, for joining in. Um, I want to meet more people, so let's have you just type in where you're joining us from, and let's get to meet you. Goodness from Abia State, I see you. Welcome. Becky from Lagos, Rafia from Ipado. Welcome, ladies. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Omi from Port Harcourt. I know one thing you just want to do right now while you're on the call is if you know a lady who needs to have some information um, or she wants to know some things before she goes into tech, you might want to just send the link for the open day events to her so that she can join in. Is that fine? All right. So, yeah, you might want to invite other people. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Okay, Inumidun from Ibadan, you're welcome. Grace from Lagos, Timilane from Calabar, Gloria from Uyo, Lillian from Ogun State. Um, welcome, guys. Wakila from Ocean State. Welcome, welcome. So I'm just going to wait a bit to have, you know, other people on the call so that they don't miss out on any of the program today. Faith from Ak. From Uyo, I see you. Adibo Wali from Abuja, you're welcome. You're welcome. I can see Debbie from Ota. You're welcome, ladies. Adana from Port Harcourt. You're welcome, you're welcome. All right, thank you so much for coming on today. So um, this is our open day event. The open day event is an event where you get to um, learn from women that have made impact in the tech space. I mean, women that have paid their dues in the tech industries, right? These women have wells of knowledge that they are gonna be sharing um, this evening. And you just get to pick one or two lessons from them. And it's it, it, it's an event where we expect that you come expectant, you know, you come determined to learn something and to also do something with the information that you have gotten today, right? So we'll be going quickly into the events of this acting and we'll be having an opening address, opening remark from um, one of our associates, her name is Joy Uche, she's on the call. So I'm gonna hand over to her now and she's going to just give her opening remark. Joy, you're welcome. Can you please um, unmute yourself and turn on your video? Thank, Thank you, you very Joy. much, Chloe. Hello everyone and good afternoon. Welcome to our open day event. We're so excited to have you join the call. We see you all. 
from the different countries, different cities. Thank you for making our time to attend this event. Um, I promise you, this will be worth your time. I am going to gain a lot from attending this event. This program is organized by Tech for Dev. It's a monthly event where a nonprofit organization we use technology to tackle unemployment and foster financial freedom for Africans. We create access to decent work and entrepreneurship opportunities and platforms for Africans through digital skills empowerment and advocacy. The Women's Excellence Initiative is one of our flagship programs, and it aims to bridge the digital knowledge divide between men and women and secure equal opportunities for women as well. We want to ensure that women have a place in every tech organization, in every organization, they have the right skills they need to assess the um, technology jobs that are out there. So right now, to take us further into the event, I'm going to be handing over to our executive director, Oladira Oladipo, to give a welcome address, and then we'll continue from there. Hi, Dura. Over to you now. Hi, Joy. Thank you so much, Joy. Thank you, Toy. And welcome to the ladies on the call today. Uh, I'm super excited. I literally had Toy, you know, really announce everyone's name from like literally different parts of Africa. I would say a very warm welcome to everyone. And thank you for joining the March 2022 20, edition of our Virtual Women Texas Open Day program. And this happens to be the third open day that we'll be having in the year 2022. We're super excited and elated to have wonderful women from across Africa join us today to learn how to pursue your interest in technology. I would especially like to welcome the prospective Women Tech Star Fellows who have joined us today to learn about starting a career in tech through our Women Texas Fellowship and to ask questions about what it takes to be a part of the fellowship. It is so amazing to see how much traction we've gained with the applications, as we already have over 12,000 applications in the last five weeks across 31 countries of residence, including countries in Asia, North America, Europe, and Australia. It is so interesting to see the diversity of women who have put in and their applications for the Women in Texas Fellowship. And what I'd like to say is we see you all, and we are rooting for you to get selected. So Tech for Dev is a nonprofit organization that creates access to decent work and entrepreneurship opportunities and platforms for Africans through digital skills empowerment and advocacy. Our vision is to equip Africans with digital and life skills that foster economic prosperity, financial freedom, and sustainable development. The Women Texas is an initiative of Tech for Dev in partnership with Microsoft that aims to bridge the digital divide between men and women in the technology ecosystem. Through our pilot program, Nigerian Women Tech Stars, we enabled almost 3,000 women between the ages of 16 to 40 across Nigeria to ignite their interest in pursuing careers and businesses in technology. Driven by the success story of numerous women on the program, we count a new ambition and a dream to replicate this model across Africa providing more women access opportunities to launch careers and businesses in technology. Our dream by 2030 is to reach 5 million women in Africa by empowering them with the knowledge and skills to partake in the technology industry in Africa and the world at large. We believe that empowering change for women across Africa, as well as providing them opportunities to access employment and entrepreneurship will help achieve a 50-50 male to female male to female ratio in the technology space. The Women Texas Open Day is a monthly virtual program organized for women across Africa to learn about leveraging the power of technology to start and advance their careers and also create technology and technology enabled businesses. The Open Day is an opportunity for women to interact with other successful women who are the women who are going to be on the call today, who have built careers or businesses in technology over the years, and who will share their personal experiences, speak about possible career paths and business opportunities, and help the women on this call appreciate the importance of acquiring digital and deep tech skills in this digital age. We appreciate Microsoft for collaborating with us, as well as FinTech Egypt for collaborating with us to bring this initiative to life. And we look forward to continually impacting and improving the economic realities of women across Africa. Once again, I would like to appreciate everyone for being here today to commence your journey to becoming women in tech. 
and to say a special thank you to our guest speakers, Nana and Rade, and to our moderator, Deisha, for taking time out of their very busy schedules to share stories of their journey as women in tech. I look forward to a wonderful and fruitful conversation here today. And thank you very much and over to you, Joy. Hi, Joy. Thank you very much, Dora. Thank you very much. We're about playing the video right now. Um, and we'll start with, we'll play the video and then continue with the event. Thank you. the ability to provide There's an African proverb that says that when you train a woman, you train it provides some sort of like 3x on ROI or whatever training it is that it gives to a woman. If the training is meant to provide some sort of financial freedom, for example, for the woman, which is the case of the women tech staff, we believe that women are able to then provide for their families, which then immediately also allows for the family's income generation to impact that of their immediate community or impact that of the nation. The problem we're trying to solve when we initiated the Women Tech Stars um, program is being able to bring women to partake within the opportunities that exist within the technology ecosystem and actually finding a balance which is having more women join the ecosystem to be able to both partake of the opportunities and also be able to contribute to the industry. By 2030, we want 5 million women to be empowered with technical skills and use their skills to either start up their tech-enabled businesses further their career in the tech space or establish their own tech startups and tech-enabled businesses. Microsoft has been an amazing and fantastic partner. Just beyond supporting us with funds, has actually gone into supporting us, like giving us technical support, like donating Azure to us, donating licenses to us, and supporting us with other forms of software and hardware to ensure that we're able to deliver effectively on whatever program it is we're partnering on. Today is the Meet and Greet event that is holding in Lagos State. The Meet and Greet event is organized for our Men Texas program beneficiaries to be able to have a physical connect. Because of the COVID-19, we're not able to have a physical meet up. So most of our training has been carried out virtually and we have women connecting online. Community building is very important to the Women Textiles Initiative. It's a community that allows women to grow, women who haven't ever been in the tech space, to grow, encourage themselves, and you know, just keep on pushing themselves to succeed. If I were to describe my experience in the Women Textiles program, awesome. I would say it was phenomenal. For me, it's inspiring. Mind-blowing. My experience at the meet and greet has been so beautiful. It was so nice to say, oh, you are, oh, America, you are favor, you are asset. So it's been really awesome how that those you relate with, related with virtually, you're now able to put a face to the name. I've tried many things. I've tried to go for other classes and it just didn't work out. It looked impossible. At a point, I just felt maybe this is not for me. Tech for Development Textiles, Microsoft gave me the opportunity to see that it is for me and it's a big thank you from this end. I'm so grateful that there's a platform like this that other women can join and um, scale up in tech. I've learned so much to see that women become better versions of themselves and go out there and explore tech. I thank Microsoft for, for their open hands for believing so much in a girl child. I think the best way to appreciate these two wonderful um, organizations is by not stopping here. To any young woman out there who is trying to get into the tech space, I would say believe in yourself, 
you can actually do it. Tech is not as difficult as people think it is. There are tons of career paths within technology that even have nothing to do with you writing a line of code. I mean, for example, there's product design, there's product management, there's data analysis, and amongst others. So I would say to every woman, believe in yourself. Whatever you think you can achieve, you can do it. Mind-blowing, inspiring, phenomenal, awesome. Those are words that um, describe what Tech for Dev, through the initiative of women texters, have been able to achieve in the lives of wonderful women. I'm sure you were inspired. I can see Henrietta saying she's inspired already. Yes, Henrietta. And I, I just want to say, being here today is a step in the right direction for you young ladies. I mean, you are here today to take that bold step to start a career in tech or to even see what tech holds for you, right? So welcome, 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 welcome once again, everybody. So I'm going to go through the bios of the amazing speakers we have for today. We have our moderator on the call, she's Desha Kanea. And then we have Nana, all the way from Ghana. Desha is from South Africa. And then we have Rade from Nigeria. So I'll just be reading their bios very quickly so that we can proceed to the um, fireside chat and have these ladies on the session. All right. So Desha is an SR technical specialist. She works with Microsoft. She's a Dynamics 365 and Power Platform technical specialist with 10 years experience. She currently works at Microsoft as a financial service industry technical expert for customer experience with the Dynamics 365 space. Prior to this, Desha has worked as a lead solution architect for the South Africa Reserve Bank. Desha's journey in tech started after becoming a system administrator at a telecom company, where she was encouraged by her mentor to pursue a career in dynamics and further her studies in tech. Because of this, Desha is passionate about mentorship for women and paying it forward, particularly in encouraging them to pursue careers in tech. Aside from tech, Desha loves to write and has released a blog on her personal journey around infertility and has worked with nonprofit organizations to impact change around medical and policies for couples who have struggled on a similar journey as her own. She's a mom, she's a wife, and she's a career driven woman looking to truly change the world. Desha, once again, wants to say welcome. Thank you for being here today. It's a pleasure to have you, Desha. So I'll be introducing um, Nana. Nana is, Nana is all the way from Ghana. She's here on the call today. Nana wants to say thank you very much for being here today. Nana is a versatile product manager with vast experience in product design, user experience, customer acquisition, and product budgeting. Over the years, Nana has used agile methodology in delivering products across different IT sectors while interfacing with clients to understand their needs and providing a working solution to their everyday problem. She's passionate about using IT to solve day-to-day -day problems and providing seamless experience for users with simplicity as a watchword. She excels in a highly competitive environment where leadership skills are key success. She possesses strong analytical abilities, problem-solving skills, and proven ability to multitask and successfully manage multiple priorities. Nana, once again, welcome on this call. Thank you so much for making our time out of your busy schedule to be here with us today. We appreciate you so much. And lastly, on our speaker list for today, we have Rade Hussein. Rade is a software engineer with Cronet here in Nigeria. She has over four years of experience in software development, and she currently works at Cronet. Prior to that, she has, a work, she has a working history as a software engineer at Workforce Group. Her tech journey started while volunteering with AYITY. AYITY is an NGO. It's named Access for Youth to Information Technology Initiative. Now, this NGO focuses on training young and less privileged children to become computer programmers. Um, Rade's uh, passion for tech started from this, her volunteering experience with this NGO. She has a strong passion for mentorship and for fun, she loves listening to music. So there you have it, ladies. We have Nana, Rade, and Desha on the call today. Over to you, Desha. Thank you, Joy. Thank you so much. And thank you for this opportunity. I appreciate it. And I'm excited to be on this call with Tech for Dev. 
So I'm going to start the conversation by asking Nana a few questions. Um, Nana, kindly tell us about your job and the relevant tech skills needed for a successful career as a product manager. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, <clears throat> good afternoon. So when it, the, I think the first thing, when it comes to tech skills, I personally, I had none. Um, I, I landed product management as a career by Serian DPT. It was, um, it was a weird, story. it's a weird story actually, but um, the key thing, aside from any tech skills, because the developer can be a product manager, but you need those soft skills yeah. that one, the ability to understand the user to the ability to negotiate with your team members because it's always a question of please can we do this please i beg you let's do this please i'm justifying this in patience and also the need to identify what to release at the most important times and also a listening ear so those are the soft skills i've survived with and the desire to learn. So although I didn't have any tech skills, once I entered into the field, I found myself trying to understand what API endpoints meant. I learned how to test API endpoints on Postman. And I mean, the, the basic things to get by. Yeah. I, yes, to survive, yes. It's interesting that you say that because I also had no tech skills when I started in the industry. And I think the, the you know, you said like your interest to learn, I think curiosity is probably the big one. You know, you're, you're being curious and, and being able to learn. Um, so I see, like you said, you know, you have a bachelor's degree in sociology and social work and a master's degree in business administration. That's a lot of degrees. Now you're currently the head of product at Bitmama with a clear path growth in product management. What prompted you, uh, your transition into the tech industry, you know, coming from all these different, I know personally, I came from finance and I ended up in tech and I see you've got sociology and social work. How, how did you make that shift into the tech industry? So that's a funny story. Actually in Ghana, what you study for your bachelor's doesn't determine your career path. <laughs> Um, and so I, after school, I did, we have this thing called national service. I think um, Niger, in Nigeria, they call it NYSC or something, Corpus, yes. So after that one year, um, I got the opportunity to, so actually there was no jobs, there are no jobs. So I just didn't care what, I just, the, the key is to be out there. Once you're out there, somebody's going to see you. So I applied to be, um, a sales assistant in a construction firm, right? Wow. Now, once I got the job, then the owner said, you're very articulate. I'm going to make you a business developer. I'm like, okay. So <laughs> I got a job in November. Obviously in December, things are winding down. So in January, he comes up for the first meeting. He's like, your first, your KPI every month is 10,000 USD. And I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, okay, so you want me to sell paint? house and other construction stuff and be able to get you 10,000 USD. Like I haven't even seen that much fiscal cash in my life. Like it's equivalent in Ghana City. Yeah. So out of fear, I just after the meeting, I used the company's computer and I went to look for jobs. And so I applied for a couple of ones and I saw an associate product management in product manager position, right? At a software company in Ghana. So I applied for it. And I went for the interview. The reason why I say it's serendipity is because at that point in time, product management wasn't a thing in Ghana. One, the CTO that was hiring me had an open mind. He was just looking out for culture because he was not setting up the department. So it was a matter of, will you work well with the people I have? From there, we can learn. Anything can happen. Yeah. So it was a learning environment where it was like, we're constantly trying to understand scrum principles, agile methodology, um how to use jira yeah and, and he encouraged a lot of reading so that that's so the switch wasn't really like a switch like i was a social worker or 
no in ghana what she study has nothing to do with what she gets to do in the interesting. end it's yeah. interesting yeah I, I love the fact that you said somebody encouraged you you know that that's where i was like I never thought I'd get into tech and somebody really encouraged me to go and learn things and learn things like Jira and coding and C sharp and, uh, you know, show me the SQL code and, and that's very interesting. And we also have Rada on and, and Rada, I guess I, I want to ask you the same question. Um, kindly tell us about your job and the relevant tech skills that you've had or needed in your career to be a successful software engineer. Hello, everybody. So um, thank you for, I hope you can hear me. Thank you for the opportunity, Deisha. Good to meet you, uh, Nana and everybody. Okay, so for me, um, the tech skills you need because of, because of the fact that I'm into software, you're writing a lot of code. So you would need, um, the, we call it, there's algorithms. Now, for some of our participants, they will be like, what does that mean? It's just simple. Let me break it down to the simplest um, um, meaning. Okay, so if you want to cook, there's a step-by-step -step way of preparing something like rice. So the same thing goes with um, code and programming, software development as well. So we need to know about algorithm. Then we have data structure. How do you want to put your data so that you can get the, the type of data that you need or you the type of data you want to send and how fast and some technical stops there. Then you also have to learn some basics, um, some basic like HTML, CSS, JavaScript. In today's modern times, we have variations of JavaScript, but that is very important as well. Then we need the server side languages. We have Python, PHP, C and um, .NET, C Sharp, and the right. Then we have the hard skills. We like call it so, sorry, the soft skills that you have to be patient. Like Nana said, you have to be patient. You have to have passion. You have to be able to work hard. Then you have to have to be able to work hard, and you have to be focused. Um, I guess this little that I can um, can really say right now, but um, it's all and more that it entails to remain in this field, to come into this field and remain there successfully. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I like the fact that you say you have to have passion and be focused because uh, you know being a developer is, is difficult. It's hard to know and learn all the different coding languages and have all those hard skills along with the soft skills. Uh, so you actually have a degree in philosophy, which is very interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. Now that you're a software en engineer at Prunage, what prompted your transition? Was it the same as Nana or do you feel like uh, technology was always your path? I mean, philosophy is super oh, no. interesting. Does no, it help okay. you? Okay, for me, I never, I never knew. Okay, let me be frank. Okay, by the time I left university, I didn't know nothing about computers. Um, usually, I'll have my sister do most of my work on the computer at school, on school way then. I, I was scared of computers and stuff. So when I got out, like Nana said, we don't know jobs. That your job, actually, what you read does not define what, how you, what, whether you get a job or not. So, so the jobs I got, they were not satisfying enough. And then they were monotonous. You just keep doing the same thing. So one day I just said, no, I can't keep working like this. So uh, fortunately for me, after I resigned and I just, I just wanted something different, but I didn't know what it was. I had no clue. So I, on Twitter one day, I came across um, a, a feed or I just came across a post by one of the uh, people I was following them. So when I saw this um, post, I asked the guy, they said the, the, the guy was teaching some, some kids computers, computer, I thought it was just all about computers. So I said, well, let me just go and offer, you know, now that I am less busy, why don't I go offer my, some assistants volunteer and teach the children computer language as well, the little that I know, because I was able to gather some 
while where I was working. So when I got there and the class started, and the children started saying some funny things and filed mentioning some terms and I was confused. I was trying to grab it, uh, grab, you know, trying to, okay, understand. Okay, okay, I think I know what this is. The inner me was trying to, okay, I know what, but I didn't know nothing. So, but there was an excitement that just kept bubbling inside of me. I was like, what are they saying? So I said, I'll keep coming. I kept coming. I kept coming. I told the guy that I would be volunteering on the side. I would, be, I would also learn as well. So he, he didn't mind, you know, and everything. So I kept coming like that. Then after the, the that, because it's always a yearly program. So when that year elapsed, I just told, I walked up to the guy, I said, please, can I come and intern with you? I don't need you to pay me. Now I'm laying emphasis on this because, um, I, uh, because nowadays I've met young people who want to come into this industry with the fact that they want to make money. So I I'm not I'm not going to I'm not into I don't buy that idea. That's where that passion thing because you are like you said, Disha, it's it's difficult. And at night night I, this morning I guess I've slept just two three hours while someone sure, slept. Sure you know, for eight hours, uh, I can get, you know, it's difficult, you have deadlines, you have schedules, and when we have people like um, Nana, that is our P PM, you need product managers, you need to meet, and you know, meet the standards, you know, and they yeah. need to just meet expectations and, and all those um, stuff. So I, I told him that I can't, I don't want you to pay me, just let me in turn, and he agreed, you know, so I, I, would, I would let us know if there, let me just quickly draw this before I forget. If there are areas where you as an as an individual, yes. as a woman, as a female, yes. as a as a well, lady, well, you, well, you well, find well. interested, please, if they are not ready to pay you and you know it's something you really want, just go for it. It so, might be tough so, on you, but yeah, the end in tech, if you if you if you are passionate, you're hardworking, it will pay at the end. It will pay you, pay it your will. bills. Yes, it will. Yeah. You you get you get opportunities yeah. that uh, you you never expected, and especially if you are the hardworking and determined type. So that was how um, that was how the journey began for me, and I got a job and like that. Like, yeah, I, I love. I absolutely love that you said that because I you know it help, it makes me feel so connected to your journey because. I also started in tech and, um, you know, I started as a, as a PA actually before I got into, you know, technology <laughs> and someone gave me and, you know, PAs don't earn a lot of money uh, and I wasn't getting paid more and uh, it wasn't like I was going to go and do and learn coding and someone was going to give me this big check at the end of the month. Uh, yes. Actually, I had to work late hours and I remember nights yeah. when I would yes, sit up with yes, developers yes. and they coding and I'd say I don't know I don't understand that tell me what you're doing write the let me see the code I want to learn um and I remember working just long into the hours late hours of the night early parts of the morning and driving home late and, and just having that passion in me where I said it's okay you know I'm, I'm not making the salary but I'm learning something I'm learning yes, and many years later many many years later it's paid off but uh, in the early stages I think you're right I think people come into the industry and say we want to earn money and it's really not it's not as easy as that you have to show the passion because there's always someone better than you and there's always someone faster and smarter and but you've got to show that grit and that passion. So, you know, tell me, what are some of the practical steps uh, that you took to solidifying your career in tech or your decision um, of going into oh, tech? I, I to okay, know. like I said, the first one. So I decided to intern because I, feel, I felt it was faster. So I get to see the work every mm -hmm. day so the, and the way the way tech is like the soft um, the soft end part you if the more practice you do it's like cooking the more you you do it do it do it do it, you become perfect at it so when you have um, similar um, situations you you solve it quickly you see those kind of problems you know how to solve them quickly 
Okay. Then when you then you like I said, then that passion is very key. And then you have to tell yourself that where you are is not enough. Like the, like the field we are is a male is male is a male dominated field, whether we like it or not. I still watched a video today on I was trying to do something, and in the classroom I was still counting how many women are here. I could see, you know, it's still it's still a male dominated field, and then you have it's top competition. I tell my mom that a lot. I don't have time. This field there is a lot of competition. I'm competing with men, men that that have that in my own terms a sense but men that are logical they have logical reasoning they are not just people who just they're also thinking as well they want so you have to sit on it you have to tell yourself if this guy can get it how do i get it if you have to meet him to teach you those are the steps you just keep going anything to make you move you have to move from here to there to just keep moving, just keep moving. There's no pride in this field. I love it. I think it's a, it's a field or is a, it humbles you. Like I would always tell my siblings, this is a place where you, you can't be proud. If your CTO is like putting up shoulders, you'll hit a blocker and you, the junior staff will be the, or the junior developer really wants to pull him through. And that blocker might be something that is costing you, that will cost him a client. So there is no place to be proud. So you just keep moving, moving, and, oh, yeah. and I love yeah. That. Yeah, making yourself better. Yes. I love that. And so I'm, I'm going to go to Nana now. Nana, can you tell me how can girls and women without any tech-related background smoothly transition and find their place in tech industries? I mean, we both said, you know, we came from somewhere with really not much tech experience. So... How, how would you say girls and women could really transition into tech? Hmm. I think for, for one, it starts before the transition, it should start from the, when we're kids, right? I think our parents, as we are now, so we should have that open mind in our generation to say, hey, look, I'm going to get my female child interested in tech so that's one way to go against the grain currently if you are not in the tech space the number one key skill is research you can't because we are it's always getting updated things mm -hmm. are always changing everything moves very fast then there's humility as she said you can't be proud it's we are in a male dominated field and honestly a girl who is confident or sure of herself is considered a, a loud person mm. i've been in an interview where the ceo told me that i remind him of cattle in his village stubborn cattle that they would beat into submission so if i work for him if i come to work for him wow. submission. this was in an interview and i don't know how i kept on the straight face honestly but once the interview was done and i went to the car i just bowed out and cried mm -hmm. so you have to have that tenacity not to give up once you start there's no going back right and right. everything is online Honestly, you can learn how to build CSS. You can learn how to, you, you just need to have that research ability, right? Yes, yeah, so that's that's what I could do, I could, I could say. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that that's interesting. I think, you know, like both of you said, we are in a very male dominated world and the responses that we get as women, if we get passionate or if we get excited or if we get, uh, proud in a meeting is very different to what a male would get. You know, I've I've been called. Um, it, it's funny that you tell that story because I've been called aggressive uh, when I'm I'm passionate about something. I get told, you know, you're aggressive, and uh, I think women get labeled so differently from men. We get labels that are completely different, and it's it's a reality. So I think it's it's very true. You have to research what you've got, what you what you want, and you have to have that. You know, I think the common thread that we keep talking about is that curiosity, that passion to go and learn and don't let anybody block your way, you know, just keep learning, keep 
uh, keep bettering yourself so you can answer those questions uh, in the room full of men. So I, I love that. Um, so in addition to tech skills, uh, we spoke about soft skills. Are there any other soft skills that you think, you, you know, there's, there's something else? We spoke about a lot of soft skills today. I feel like that's a big, a big theme, you know, be humble, be, uh, be kind, be curious. But is there anything else you think that is like a real gem that these girls can take away? You have to tap into your girl power and be manipulative. I'm going to be honest here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to mention it. I love it. <laughs> when, yeah, you're, yeah. When, when you're handling or dealing with six to seven, eight, nine males, boys, guys, men, grown men, you, you, you have to have that. You see, first, it goes beyond the fact that you're a teen. You need to be able to identify with every single person. Right. It shouldn't be forced, but you need to be able to touch base with every single person and build that respect so that they know that. Yeah. So for me, you can, they, they knew I was trying. Sometimes when I see the reviews they have on me, like I'm shocked because I didn't know they see it. So you have to try so that you meet them halfway. So you have to be manipulative because there are some times that there's a feature you want to build as a product manager and some of the devs just don't understand it. and. Mm -hmm. You need them to believe in it to build it. Otherwise, they're just going to code weird things for you with logics that you can't even go back. You both know it. So, <laughs> so, so you have to find she that way. Also of, laughing because she knows how, how it is. Yeah. So, so you have to. Be, that's that's one of the. I mean, I was talking about being a negotiator, um, communicating properly and all of that but like you have to be man like low-key let's not put it out there but we all yeah. know yeah. yeah i i think you you're so right i think i love that you said you have to connect to everyone because in the world you won't always get along with everybody but sometimes when you want something you have to make an attempt or an effort to get along with that person. So wow. when you want them to build something, you've got to go and say, hey, how's your family? How's your kids? What, what do you like that I like? Or maybe I don't like, but I can talk to you about it, right? So I think that, that's the really nice way to, to put it. Um, so Rada, um, tell me in, in your experience, does being a woman in tech uh, come with extra mental challenges that you have to overcome? Uh, for instance, starting your own ability and how do you tackle these challenges? I think, I think for me personally, I sometimes really struggle, you know, um, with questioning myself, my confidence, even though I've been in the industry for 10 years, I think sometimes I still think, oh, do I, do I really know this answer? Is this really the right answer? And sometimes I still keep quiet in meetings when I shouldn't, I should be talking up. So so tell me, tell me a little bit about how you keep your mental challenges and, um, you know, how do you tackle these challenges every day? Okay, thank you that you said every day, because yes, every week I, I have mental challenges. Okay, like I, I have mental challenges of, um, at work. Okay, um, one, of, one of, at least one, one of the, those I can mention is um, quite many, but one, the one I can remember is um, the first thing you said before it skips my mind, my, I'm, the confidence in myself. Am, am, I, am, I, am I where I want to be? Especially when you're asked to do something that probably your, your team lead expects you to get it done in a few hours because he can do it in less hours and uh, less minutes or so. And you, you are taking, this is going like two days and the results when even, even when the result comes back it still has to be reviewed and there's still corrections and when when i sleep i'm like i'm not there i'm not there you know it's it's even hard to eat or to you know you just find yourself thinking but then um, i would say i'll just pray and let everything subside because i need to be focused you know just need something that you don't need to be troubled so like um, you just keep working hard so those are the challenges i face to become better yes to write better code standard code to be better uh, um, at what i do so basically basically for us that's our yardstick so that's what if you're better if you write faster if you can interpret your 
your code properly and deliver on time. It also shows and the way you structure your code. Those are the parameters that we have to move up. So it, that's what we define how good, how, you know, but they always like, oh, refer to, uh, if you need help, go to um, Rade, go to, you know, and th that's how, that's the standard which we work um, as developers and um, software yeah. developers. So those are the challenges and how do I overcome them? I just tell myself that, um, okay, today is one day at a time. I didn't get it today, let yeah. me try, let me try tomorrow. Let me try. And then you see, you see that you're improving. You will see. That's why I like programming. You see that you're improving. So that mm -hmm. gives you that joy. Oh, I, I've done it. I did it better. And and that keeps encouraging you. And like I said, I just I, I pray. <laughs> yeah. So that, I love that. I love that. that. I love that. Yeah. Praying is praying is a big thing for me too. I think also personally, I think um learning, like like you said, you know, just keep learning because. Um, the more I learn, the more confident I get. But I think you do struggle mentally every day, you know, to be that person in the room. Uh, we spoke so much about men, um, but I think it is, it is a, it's reality, you know, and also having other strong females around me. Like I love having, talking to you and to Nana because it's, it's gives me that confidence, you know, that we all are going through it, through the same things, the similar situations. Um, so, you know, I know you transitioned to the tech industry for over four years now. I'm not going to ask you about your transition, but I do want to ask you, what do you think um, should be changed in terms of women inclusion? What do you think the world can do or tech can do to include more women in it? Okay. Um, I think they're already doing so because before, before now, um, some, 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 some men or some C C CTOs or some bosses don't don't know that women can come into this can really can be software engineers so they don't like to but they, they started extending um, um, how do I call it now they started extending um, sorry I'm just lost of the term so you can actually come in so you can get a job. So they've extended it to women in this part of the world. So you, you can get into an office. You won't be surprised that a woman is a software. Before it wasn't like that. You know, there's always doubts because I've worked with some people and they keep referring to me as he, he, he. <laughs> keep, you know, the, the clients can't see me. So they keep referring, he, my programmer, he will, he will. You know, so. <laughs> So now that I'm seeing more confidence and it is she will do this, she is a, she is a, so I think they start accepting that's one, that's a big break for us in this part of our world, Nigeria. And also how can the world, um, like, okay, like this initiative, the support they are giving, I'm sorry, I'm speaking more of the software um, side, but from the short video I saw, they're doing a fantastic job at tech for them honestly they are really doing a fantastic job Brilliant. and uh, yes because yes i've seen i couldn't have just seen with female um, they call them cloud infrastructures i didn't know females were interested in you know and they work with so much passion and, and you know i'm really i'm really happy i'm always teasing them and stuff like that and you know so they, they i think the world has awakened and i've i've come to realize that so the, the world is ready for us. So what we need to do is make sure that we don't turn this, this avenue to um, a woman. Oh, I'm a woman, I cannot. So we know that men are already there. So what we need to do is try and, try and match up. If we can't get there, just be as good or better than the men. So let them know that, oh, a woman can also do this. So why is... Why am I, why do I even want to pay her less? Why a woman can be my CTO? I'm, exactly. I, I'm, exactly. Yes, so, so, we, so, so we should just ensure yeah. attitude. I know we are emotional people, but yeah. yes, yes, that comes in the way yeah. often. I see that at work in myself too, you know? So, you yeah. Know, but most times you need to, we, we, we need to try and drop because of the, the way the field is. We need to just try and put that somewhere, you know, and just exactly. blend in so that they will know that we, we can put our emotions somewhere and still take on positions as um, CTOs and other top 
Um, yes. Yeah. So that, that's and I love that you've spoken about emotional, you know, being emotional, because I think we forget that being emotional is not always a bad thing. You know, uh, sometimes you need women to be emotional to fix problems, even in tech. Uh, you know, coming from Microsoft, uh, we often see that uh, a lot of our LTR senior leadership is female. Uh, you know, the South African MD, uh, Lillian Barnard, is female. Um, and she does a phenomenal job at leading an entire subsidiary in South Africa. Um, and she's all for women and all for diversity and inclusion. I think one of the things that I really love, though, that you said was, you know, uh, we, we can recognize that emotional piece in us and not always bring it to the table and know that we have to sometimes be better than the men in the room. So I really, really love that. Um, and so Nana, I want to ask you, um, can you share with me a significant milestone in your journey that has stood out for you? And then I'd also love to hear like, what are some of those challenges you've overcome? You know, you spoke so boldly about the interview. And I mean, I don't know if I would have had that much patience <laughs> as you did. Um, but tell me, like, what are what are some of those challenges? I, I, you know, personally, I know being in tech is is as a female, there's always things that happen. And I think, oh, my gosh, how, how am I going to deal with this? So tell me some of those challenges. How did you overcome them? Um, so the very first one was my very first job that I got. And after learning so much uh, within two years, everything be began to feel stale. You know, when you're like in an organization, like an established organization and the bureaucracy is too much, the learning has basically stopped. And I would tell everyone here that that is when you know you need to move out. Yeah, yeah. The learning stops. Because for me, as an associate, the hope was to change into be a product manager. So you see, you see, there's a there's a career trajectory in your mind. You'd be an associate, you'd be a product manager, be a head of products like I am now. Hopefully, one day I could be a country manager. You know, there there there's a path in your mind. So if at a point the learning stops, you have to move. Yeah. And one of the major shifts in my life that at that point in time I thought was the hugest mistake I made but it paid out in the long run was I stopped working in that established company to join a startup because wow. in the startup my job title was product lead that was all that concerned me including the fact that I would have nobody to look over my shoulder so then I can actually hold yeah. the entire process and launch a product and see I did this. Unfortunately, I joined a startup with someone that we had a personal, so he was with friends. So it was like a group of friends. He was like a mentor to me. And once we launched that product, he pushed us out and sold the product. And wow. yes. And and it was weird. The whole thing was very surreal. So it was during that moment that I had that interview where I was told that I was beaten into submission. I mean, that was a weird time in my life, seriously. That was 20, <laughs> 2019. He actually fired me a day before my birthday. So I remember him calling me back the next day to tell me that the person I was looking for a job. And you know, the tech space in Ghana is very small. It's very, yeah. very small. So yeah. then like the, the, the CEO has called him for a, review, um, a reference and what should he tell him? So I don't know what he told the CEO for that to happen. These are the challenges, you know. So I get into the interview and the first question is, why am I wearing a, a yellow dress? It's so loud, like why? Then you give me an aptitude test and obviously I'm out of job. So I've been practicing for it. And yeah, like I answered it too quickly within three minutes and I made a mistake about this one question that you were looking out for. Meanwhile, I got eight over 10. So that one question that you think would stand me out and didn't was because I rushed through it. These were the challenges. So the milestone was I moved from an established company, went into a startup. Then I luckily joined a, a Francophone um, company, tech company, and I started working from, that was also another milestone. And, you know, I got the opportunity, you know, from where we were with the startup, 
because and that's why i say that you need to have some level of personal relationship with everybody you work with because it was through recommendations that have got me where i am today yeah yeah i agree and honestly this job at bits mama was through recommendations from someone i worked with in the past where i'm in this wonderful company a female-led company where her first instincts is to tell you that when you're interviewing for people with the highest preference is females she would prefer to have a female designer, a female product manager. I mean, if you don't get one that's qualified, go for the male. But then between the two, pick a woman. Yeah. I, so, I love that. I think I think you are so brave. I mean, how brave is it for you to go into a startup? And I think that that's like a really big thing. That, that was ignorance, trust me. <laughs> and naivety. <laughs> because I had a family to feed. Like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, like, I, I could say, okay, maybe. You I learned, had, right? You learned like, a lot. I could say, and, and, and I wouldn't take anything away from it. I would right. prefer to be in that naivety and make that bold step. And there's always this thing where I don't know, I don't want to shift it into um, religion or anything like that. But with my personal relationship with God, God will always make a way. I love and it. So yeah. Yeah. Once you're in fellowship with him, you may think you make decisions on your own, but things align in a way that you 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 just didn't realize right. i wouldn't be head of products i mean i'm just 30 right wow but but i love it i think you know like you said you learn so much uh, you know that that seems to be like something we forget as females we get scared you know we get scared like what if I join a company and uh, personally on my journey, you know, I spoke uh, a little bit about my infertility and um, I remember joining Microsoft and um, I actually fell pregnant the week that I joined Microsoft. I was like, oh no, they're going to be like, they hired a female and now that she's got to go on maternity leave. And um, and it wasn't, but I think the, the bravery and that step to go in there or the step to make mistakes and learn from them, you know, um, that's a big one. So for me, if there's any women on the call that are, that are scared of the next step or scared of getting into tech, like do it, just jump in. You might swim, you might make it great, you might fail and you might have a startup that somebody takes from you, right? But uh, you learn with everything and, and look at where you are now. So what are some of your like closing uh, statements? What, what do you really want to leave the woman with? What are your closing remarks? What do you think is that, that piece of... Um, a jewel that they can take with them and keep with them live for yourself love it uh, and i could expatiate it a bit i mean as girls we are we are we are trained to go to school marry take care of our babies every decision is based off of these parties trust me men don't think about us it's not in a bad way they're trained to be selfish. It's not, they are not even being malicious. It's just, I have an opportunity. I need to go do it. Live for yourself. Mm -hmm. If you get married and there's an opportunity to work somewhere else in a tech company somewhere, you and your husband have to make it work. If he can't make it work, please live for yourself because you end up regretting it. You end up with so much remorse. You just end up a bitter person. And the reason why you stayed behind even doesn't even become a good marriage yep yep so live for yourself in a way where you choose the right partner as well where certain questions are not even questions like let me give you an example i've gotten the opportunity to um i'm 2022 mandela fellowship so i've been selected and my elder sister's first question was i'm supposed to we're supposed to go to they place us in an american institute where we study for two months and then we come back home. My sister is like, will my fiance be okay with that? I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm confused. This one is even fiance, it's not even husband. And it's two months, I'm coming back. Even if I wasn't coming back, I, I'm confused. In yeah. this Africa where we are all suffering. If I get this opportunity, the question you're asking me is, is someone okay with the fact that I'm going? If he has a problem with it, you should have a problem with him right 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 i love it i love it thank you that is phenomenal like advice i mean i'm also married and uh, i know opportunities are going to come and uh, 
I think have a supportive spouse, have somebody who supports you, but live for yourself. That's amazing. Uh, Roddy, I guess I'm going to ask you the same question. What is your final gem for the ladies on this call? What do you think is the one thing they can take with themselves um, and really hold on to? Okay, from Paul that we said today, um, I'm going to be as simple as possible. Um, I hope you've picked something from all that myself, Nana, and Isha has shared. Honestly, even if you don't need too much, because sometimes what will drive you far is not plenty of talk. You've been to so many um, conferences or like the Tech for Dev series, and you just need something. And if you've gotten that thing from this talk, then you're ready to go. But if you haven't, I hope you find it. And then once you find it, like you said, just run. Just run. And I said, don't let anything hold you down. It's your husband, you talk to him, negotiate. You guys come to a compromise. If it's family, talk to them. Let them support you. If they are not ready, just run. So that at the end, you'll be happy because where where we are, I guess I'm happy. I guess Disha is happy. Yes. And I'm happy, honestly. I don't need to fix it. I don't need I don't need um, any material thing to to make it come. It's just genuinely there. It's just like you're in a place where you found yourself and you're not tired. So if you can get that, it might be in tech, it might be in business, it might be singing, dancing, whatever. But Whatever it is, look for it, and once you get it wrong, that's 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 what I have. Thank you. Amazing, such a such a great uh, session. I want to thank Nana and Rada. We're going to go into some questions for you guys. Um, so let's see let's see what I've got here. Um, the question. So I, I'm going to try and pronounce the names. If I get it wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, Nanklin Sambo asked, I started learning product design specializing with UX, UI and UX design. How do I get an internship role for product design? Um, I guess I'm going to ask, uh, Nana, do you have any advice on like what you should be doing for product design and where you think uh, an internship role would be, you know, how does someone get an internship role for something like that? For product design. Um, for internship opportunities, I, I'm not so sure. I think probably maybe my company has those opportunities. I'll have to check into it. But um, I think personally, even a combination of product design with product management is very powerful. I answered someone's question in there because you need to think like a user as a product manager. Now, if you have that power to translate it into design, that means you, you, you remove that dependency or you can even work better with a product designer to think further, right? Yeah. So um, for internship opportunities, I'm not so sure, but I know that product design is self-taught. Like you can um, use um, Adobe XD or Figma. And then there are a couple of classes on Google, um, I think Google has a couple of classes. Yeah. So you really need to just type it into like Google search yeah, it. Yeah. Search you it right? find, yeah, you find you find something there for you. Yeah. yeah. And I and I think if even if you don't find an intern space, I think you know, look for a job. Look for somebody that's willing to, you know, teach you. Mm. LinkedIn, find somebody who's a product designer and say, Hey, are you willing to teach me? What's the worst that could happen? They say no, and you know, you try again, try with someone else. Um, Rana, tell me, we've got a question from Rachel who asks, what is the basic skills to learn to begin this tech journey? What do you think are some okay. of the basic skills you could learn? Okay, she, uh, she, start, you know, she should start with um, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Those are the basics uh, for web designing and gradually you you move on to other, but that those are the basic skills, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, 
then once you're you're strong and when we mean strong you you're good at least to uh, to an extent then you can start adding the server side to it server side means um, where you get the data and you you do whatever you want with it and return it back to the user so that's the server side that does all that but just go html css javascript and get good at it that's awesome i i think if i had to add a little bit onto that it would be you know tech is a lot of different things you know we we have html javascript designers you know Rade is a, 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 you know, she, she's coded, she's, a de, she's got development background, she understands it. I don't have development background. I've uh, learned through applications and um, software as a service and uh, infrastructure as a service and, and things like that. So, you know, I would really say again, like research and, and find the path that you want to go down and certify yourself. You know, Microsoft offers great certification. So go get certified in something, um, whether it's Dynamics or um, not just Microsoft, you know, all the tech companies across the globe offer it. So, so see what you can kind of find. Um, so someone asks, is Excel really important in our journey into tech? Uh, I will give Rada this one. What do you think, Rada? Is Excel really important as a journey in tech? Excel, right? Um, Excel, okay. <laughs> Why don't Deja answer? She's into <laughs> I'll take that one. Okay, I'll take that one. Um, I think Excel is, is not really, really important. Excel is something that can be taught. You can probably find a pretty easy course on Excel to go and learn it. Um, I, I think in the past, Excel used to be super important into a journey in tech, but I would still say again, go, go explore those certifications, go and explore what does Microsoft offer? What does Amazon offer? What is, um, you know, it doesn't have to be a Microsoft space, but uh, you know, what, what is the tech companies across the world offer for young girls to get into tech? I'm, of course, a Microsoft advocate and a Microsoft D, so I would say, you know, go and check out Microsoft, but, uh, you know, find your path using what is relevant in today's world, because I think Nana said early on in the conversation, like, everything's always changing. The world is always changing. And Excel is 20, 30 years old, so it's, it's still changing. And yes, you can do a lot in it. But the world is always changing and tech is always changing and we have to adjust just like our male counterparts are adjusting as well. Uh, so Esther asked, is computers the number one tool to have before going in tech? Um, Esther, do you mean, uh, I'm assuming Esther means computer uh, sort of uh, sciences, I guess it's computer sciences in school or, or University, Nana, you wanna you wanna take that one for us? The question is: Is do you need to have studied computer science in school? Yeah, so, it, it, is it the number one tool before going into tech? I mean, I I personally don't think so because no. I think all the ladies. Well, most most of the developers I worked with actually studied studied electrical engineering, mechanical right. engineering. So actually, to combine with a question someone had about, I think she studied something else in school. You use your spare time. Most of the yeah. developers I know of, they didn't yeah. study computer science, and it's actually a waste of time in my country because you'll be writing code on a paper piece of paper, writing code on a piece of paper, and that's that's not it. So you, you just have to, that's the research. You see, it's difficult to hone that skill, but once you hone it, it, it takes you a long way. Just okay. Google Chrome is your friend. Everything Google. is on the internet. It's your friend. Google is your friend. I love that. Google is your okay, friend. Okay. I would like to also add, Nana is right. Nana is right. But if, what if the person finds herself in that, uh, maybe he's already taking a course there. So what you just need to do is just focus more. Yes, some get some and if um, some you write code on paper and they are not very detailed when it comes to training. But what you do is just you know what you want now, which makes it easier for you. So because at the end of the day, I've heard um, top um, senior devs saying um, they have better 
um, relationships with, uh, I won't call it relationship, that they, they, those that read computer science do more better because they have that background already. It's like an advantage, not that they do more for yeah. you, but they have that advantage. So you just need, if you found yourself there and you want to go for it, you just go into it and you know what you want to do. It makes it easier for you than the rest of the team that are just there. They don't know what A is, B is. Yeah. And that will give you a That's good. That's good advice. That's very good advice. Um, we have Anonymous here. I'm guessing this question is for Nana because it talks about product management. Uh, they say, I've been waiting to, I've been wanting to transition into tech because I love solving problems and provide solutions since 2020, but I didn't have anybody to encourage or advise me. My knowledge wasn't broad in it. Early this year, I got to meet a few people who enlightened me and afterwards introduced me to tech for dev. Currently, I'm learning UI or UX, but I'm registered for product management in the next tech for dev cohort. Are these two courses compatible? Sorry, can you come again? Can you highlight? Uh, currently, I'm learning UI or UX, but I'm registered for product management. Are these two courses compatible? Yes. As I was saying, it, 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 it makes you very powerful. So, you know, working in a team with a product designer some of them always have this thing of saying oh you can't put this button here no that's not how it's done in ui ux and because you haven't studied it you swallow what they are saying then you take the design to the developer and say no where you place the design no we can't build it now you're torn because you don't know yeah so with your experience or with you learning UI UX, you combine with product management. It's just like knowing a bit about, not like a bit, but knowing about um, software development so you can have that rapport with developers. To have that knowledge is key. So you should be able to, if you have the time, if you can't split focus, you have to take one after the other. But if you can, it's, it's a powerful combination. That's awesome. That's great advice. Um, and then we've got a question that says, oh, I'm just, uh, if you're transitioning, how do you figure out the exact tech area you want to venture in? Um, I, maybe I'll take that one. I don't think you can figure out the exact tech area you want to venture in. I think you have to you have to try everything because you'll just never know what you like. Uh, you know, you might get into something and find you're exceptionally good at it. Uh, like I was, and I was exceptionally good at dynamics and um, solution engineering and architecting and things like that. But you you would have to just try. I don't think there's an exact recipe. Um, any Anything from Radio or Nana, anything you want to add to that? All right. No. You're, you're correct. You're, you're correct. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm going to just try and find a few. Mm. Okay, so we've got, I was interested in software development and I learned the basic HTML, CSS and JavaScript. But as time went by, I got interested in cybersecurity, particularly ethical hacking through research and curiosity. What skills do I need to become a successful ethical hacker? From Boy to Mello. Rada, do you want to take that one? Unfortunately, this is not um, where I've really ventured, but to become um, like, if, you, if, if you're already into it, so like you said, just keep doing research and then look for opportunities where you can, um, you can have, you can have a, you can, there could be an opportunity for you to mix with people who are already into it. That is, yeah. yes, don't, don't, um, don't stay alone. I know there's been self-taught and, but you need to know some other underground rudiments, fundamentals and to, and to help your passion burning. So look for avenues where um, there are people doing it and offer to, offer service that you would like to be part of them, something like that. If you 
Do you get what I'm saying? So like that, you would it will help it will help you go far. So that's that's it. Yeah. And we have a qu another question. Can one combine tech with a full time work? I I'm guessing with a second or first job. Uh, if yes, how do you manage your time? I'm going to say no, <laughs> you can't because tech takes up all your time. Um, and it's probably best to have the job that's focused around your tech. Um, what about Nana and Rada? Rada, I see you shaking your head. What do you think? You are correct. That's why I'm shaking my head. I don't know how you, you can't, I don't know how you're going to do it. It's, it won't work. You won't go far. You, you, you won't go far somehow. With time, you understand. You won't go very far. It's either you drop one, take the other. Like you said, take 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 all of your time. It just it will. So you just need yeah. Time. Yeah, I think I think you need to focus on you know one or the other. And I think if you're interested in take, then just kind of focus in take. Um, let's see if I can find another one for us. Um, so we've got, it seems like we've got quite a few for Rada. I want to go into data science because I'm a biochemist and our research has to do with data analysis, pre presentation and interpretation. How do I go about doing this? Okay, so for data science, um, it's still the same. Um, thing. I, I, I don't have much knowledge in, um, in data science, but I know it's kind of the in thing now. I've seen some colleagues, um, you know, picking up um, lessons or two videos or two, and I've seen some individuals too. So what you need to do is get an avenue, I'll say it again, where people are into data science. Since you, this, this is what you want. That's all. You, you want something, look for people that are doing it. Just look for them. I know you might, I don't know your excuses, so I can't say I know you might. So I don't know your excuses, but please just try and make the excuses less. Look for people that are doing what you like and, and just follow. And, um, That's great advice. That's good advice. Look for people that are doing it. Um, so Nana, what is the difference between product management and product design? Um, product design is a subset of product management. Product design falls is a part of the product life cycle. So a product manager goes out, identifies a problem, validates the problem, creates a product requirement document. The product designer is the starting point. They translate that document or the answer, the solution to the customer's need into user interface and user experience. So then from there, the developers build and implement. So that's the difference. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah, that, that's a good difference. It's a good explanation. So I have one here that I think all of us can probably answer. Um, I need advice on how I can manage family and tech or job or research. <laughs> Uh, it's a good one. I mean, I think, you know, um, personally, uh, working for a company that, um, like Microsoft, that pushes work-life balance is important. Uh, you know, we spoke about mental health issues and how hard it is for women in tech. I think personally, uh, I try and prioritize my family. Um, I try and prioritize um, time with them it doesn't always happen I do work long hours I sometimes feel a lot of guilt about it and uh, have a lot of deadlines that I have to meet and um, you know push myself beyond that I don't think there's a secret recipe um, but I do think that um, you know if you're passionate and you love tech um, you have to find that balance you know because you can get quite absorbed in that world but uh, you have to find that balance. So um, I think it's all about that fine line and uh, knowing when to switch off. And I'm sure Rada and Nana will tell you they, they're like me, we don't know when to switch off. Um, but uh, I think uh, if you're passionate about it, uh, you'll find that balance. Nana, do you wanna answer some? Do you wanna answer what, what do you think? How do you think you can manage that? <laughs> it's a tough one. I know when to switch off. <laughs> 
I love it. I I guess okay. So I I okay maybe I I, I know when to switch off, but I actually don't switch off until it gets extreme. So maybe let me say it like that. Um, you actually need a very supportive family. Trust me. Ever since I even went remote, I think the last time my younger brother was like, "Because of you, we can't turn on the TV with volume in the house. Because of you, we can't do this. Because of you, we can't do this." And there are times where basically, um, I'm out on a Saturday or a Sunday, and I'll have to sit in the car to take a meeting. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm so so. You are not present. That's it. You are not present. I would sometimes just shut down for like a weekend. Yeah. Or sometimes when I get the opportunity to travel for work, like now, I basically would shut down. Because yeah. evening gets too stressful trying to combine. If you if you travel for work, you're actually working. Yeah, working more than you'd you're have working. working if you were sitting inside your room working. So right. I even find it difficult trying to combine all those things. I think another thing I wanted to ask uh, to someone trying to combine their main career with tech is yes, yes. even we sometimes we try to have two to three jobs for four jobs, you can't even survive. So imagine if you have a full-time career and you try to do that. At this point, in time, it's a combination of a question about someone being 36 and what do they do? How would they personally impact you? If you lose money with your main career, is it okay for the dream you are trying to achieve? It's a personal question you have to answer. So your family will be neglected. I think I answered that. Your family will be neglected. You need a supportive partner. That's number one, like major thing. Someone who is okay, especially if they are not in the tech space. Someone who is okay that you may go higher than they would. Yeah may have more money than they have mm-hmm. well we can't say people don't have egos but they can push their egos aside for their family mm. it's good your partner right it's good it's yeah. good I, i'm actually i'm actually on vacation uh, right now <laughs> And I've had to switch off also, uh, but I had to, uh, you know, I really wanted to be here for this interview, but it's interesting that you say that because sometimes you, you always want to check your emails and you always want to check meetings and you, you know, and I've learned to like switch everything off and not actually look at it. Don't look at the emails. Don't switch all the notifications off on your phone. Don't look at it. Leave your laptop at home, but it is hard. It's hard. Uh, Rada, what do you, what do you think? How do you, you know, what do you think is that balance? Do you think we can balance family and tech? Okay. Uh, it's hard. <laughs> Honestly, you, you're right. You all, you all said it well. It's, it's hard. Yeah, it's, hard. it's hard. It's hard. Uh, from my side, at least Nana can. She, Nana said something. She said she can, she can stop or shut down or something. I, I don't know if I can shut down, but you know, because uh, maybe I'm owing someone some some job or I have schedules that I have to complete. You're owing um, a PM a task. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and you're just sat there and you just like she said, yeah, I think she's right. You just tell yourself, no, I'm not doing anything. Let me just rest. Let me just rest. Sunday, no, I don't want to do anything. But the, the Sunday and the Saturday, you don't do anything. So you pay for it Sunday, probably Sunday <laughs> to Monday morning, you know. So I don't know. That's the way the job is. Right? Because I way love the it. World works. Yeah. So the way it works. So, it, you know, so I don't really feel it, but it's hard. Okay. I have to combine it with family. I don't know. But it's worth it. Yeah, but it's, it's worth it. it. Right. It's worth it. Yes. Like right. said, just so, have an understanding partner and family that's supportive. You are good. You are always good. That's awesome. Yes. That's yes. awesome. Thank you so much, ladies. Nana, Rada, it was amazing chatting to the two of you. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules and talking to me. Um, I loved hearing your stories and, and I loved interacting with the both of you. Uh, so it's much appreciated. Thank you. I'm going to now hand over back to, I think it is Joy. Hi, 
Hi everyone, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, thank you so much, Lady. Thank you so much, Nana. Thank you so much, Rade. Thank you so much, Desha. It was a wonderful session, an enlightening session. I mean, I can see the chat box going. It's just bubbly. Like, ladies are just like, so I like me, so inspiring, so amazing. And really, to be honestly sincere, that was an amazing session, right? Thank you so much for sharing. Um, from your depth of knowledge, you've been truly inspired this afternoon. Thank you so much. Um, so quickly, before we move on to the next session, um, we'll just take a photograph together. So I just want to turn on your videos and, you know, um, let's take that picture together for memory's sake, right? Yes. So, um, all right. So I'm just going to put it in a gallery setting so that I can capture everybody. Yes, Joy, you can turn on your videos so we can take a picture together. And every other panel is nice on the call. Thank you, Joy. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you. All right, Usman, you can go ahead. All right, thank you. Almost there. Uh... Yeah, got it. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Usman. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, ladies, I'm sure we've been inspired today. I mean, um, there are a lot of lessons to be learned, right? Starting from the fact that it's not an easy journey going into the tech space, and you will need to really be passionate, to be dedicated, to be resilient in your pursuit. You, you just have to take what you want. You have to see it, believe in it, and be so self-driven that you know you want to achieve this and you're going to get it right and um i mean nana shared how she was fired from a job and she didn't just say oh this is the end of the road i give up she picked it up you know worked so hard and then she's head of product that's no small feat at such a young age right and of course we have radi radi who studied um, physiology in school you know no no correlation to being a software engineer whatsoever but we have now get today working as a software engineer as one of the top tech companies in nigeria you know so you can do anything as long as you can see it right so very quickly we'll be um playing a short video and then when you come back from watching that video we're going to take a quick poll to just see what we've learned, what our decision is. And just after the poll, we'll kick in to our Ask Me Anything session. I can see a lot of questions in the question um, section and the chat box about the fellowship application and all of that. And yes, Joy Uche is on the call and she's going to be answering some of those questions. And I hope she'll be able to take all of them, but if not all, I shall be able to take 80% of those questions. So I'm just going to hand over to Joy to play the video and then when we are back, we're going to take a quick poll. Joy, over to you. My name is Fatima Ahmed. I'm from Ilarin Kwa State. I studied chemistry from the University of Ilarin, but now I'm a woman in tech. Getting a job in Nigeria is very difficult. After my National Youth Service program, I was at home for like five to six months, writing CVs, applying for jobs, and the highest I got was callbacks, which was very frustrating. I was talking to a friend about the difficulties of getting a job in Nigeria, and he was telling me about the opportunities in tech. Coincidentally, at that time, another friend of mine was telling me about how she went to the Nigerian Met Textiles program, where she learned how to code and build websites. Seeing what she could do, I was motivated to apply for the Nigerian Met Textiles program. The training was for 12 weeks. I learned technical skills, um, building websites, writing codes. I also Excellent soft skills, communicating effectively, working in teams. It's made me more effective in what I do today. Coming for the training, I just felt that, okay, I'll just learn some new skills, then have to go back home to apply for other jobs. But during the training, I started getting a lot of job opportunities. And here I am today, I have a good job, and I am glad I took the full step to come for the Nigerian Men Texas training. I currently work as a technical support engineer at Tech Experts where I provide cloud-based solutions. I want to use this opportunity to encourage other young women out there who are looking for jobs to empower themselves with tech skills and take advantage of opportunities like this. 
With partners like Microsoft, we've been able to train over 2,475 women in coding and deep tech skills across 12 states in Nigeria. And all this training was done for free. Over the next 10 years, we will train 5 million women across Africa by 2030. And we're looking for partners who could join us on this journey. Thank you so much, Joy. Um, ladies, I hope you were inspired by that video. Yes, um, we'll be going straight to a poll session. I'm going to start to share a short poll with um, all of us on this poll. It's just about five questions. I'd like us to just quickly fill it in. And then once we get back, we're going to go straight to the Ask Me Anything question. Thank you so much for staying with us. So let's go straight to the poll. You're going to see it pop up on your screen and you're just to answer the questions. It, um, you can just, stick, you don't have to type in anything. It's not lengthy, it's an objective-based question, right? Thank you very much. I'm sure we can see the poll now, so. Um, let's quickly just do that so that we can move on. All right, I can see people's responses already. Thank you so very much. Let's keep feeling it. Okay, so we just have about two more minutes. Okay, and just a minute left for those of us that have not yet finished. Just one more minute. Thank you, Mary Jane. Thank you. Thank you, Damilola. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Faith. Thank you, Joanne. I can see the response coming in. And just 30 seconds more. All right, so we'll call it a wrap. All right, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for filling our polls. We appreciate you. So we're going to go straight to the Ask Me Anything session and um, helping us to tackle some of these questions. Today we have Joy Uche, a Programs Associate, and a one-time Women Texas alumni. Joy, welcome on the call. It's a pleasure to have you. We. Oui. All right, so we just want to start with, you know, a quick run through on the Women Tech Stars program. Can you just tell us, okay, as Tech for Devils as a company, we have the Women Tech Stars initiative that sort of give women the platform to build a career in tech. Now, what kind of programs do we have that, you know, 
enables these women to start a career in tech. Thank you very much, Tony. So um, the Women Excess Initiative, we have some categories, some major categories of programs. Um, one of which is to create is to create awareness, the advocacy arm, we have the advocacy arm, um, which we do through the Tech Girls Drive Initiative. The Tech Girls Drive is for the younger demography, younger girls between the age of six, six and 18, you know, to inspire them, to help them choose STEM related career. Um, as they grow up, right, we go to schools, we go to, you know, places of worship, just to gather these young girls and help them, you know, break the biases, help them to understand the importance of acquiring tech skills, irrespective of their chosen course of study. Um, we also have open day events, our open day events are monthly. I, I saw a comment, someone asking, um, when will the next open day be? So every month, the last thought of every month, just know that we'll be having an open day event. Um, and during the open day events, we invite, you know, speakers like Nana, Deisha, and Radhi to talk about their experience in tech, you know, share their stories with you, help you understand what you need to do to get, you know, a successful career in the tech space. And we want to create awareness for more women, you know, to leverage the opportunities that tech presents. And for the next open day, please, I urge everyone of you to invite someone, invite your sisters, your mothers, your friends to attend the open day event. Like I said, it's monthly. And it's interesting, the conversations get interesting. You get to learn so many things that will help you build your, you know, your confidence, help you make a decision, help you decide on what to do and take the bold step. Um, we have master classes. Master classes are one or two days trainings facilitated by skilled professionals. The master class are um, fashion for women that are already in tech, you know, to just learn a topic, the topical based um, sessions organized and facilitated by, you know, tech people that are tech experts to train them, to handhold them, and give them a practical session on a particular topic. So um, if you are new into tech where and the masterclass is not for you, it's actually for women that are already in tech and they understand this topic so that they can be able to relate. Um, and it's just, the duration is just a day or two. It's not really long. It's not like um, the, the other programs that we have. Another training program we have is our bootcamp. Our bootcamp are, um, it, it takes longer duration. It's comprised of two weeks of training. After the training, we don't just train ladies and let them go. We help, we group them together to work on projects. We come up with fantastic um, group projects and work together in a team, you know, to develop prototype solutions. And then they demonstrate these projects um, in front of a panel of judges who then score them and they get scored for the bootcamp. So our bootcamps will still resume. Um, last year, we were able to hold six bootcamps and we want to do more this year starting from next month. So just watch our social media space for the next good time. If you're interested, it's two weeks. It's an introductory um, course. You know, you can be introduced to it, any of our eight learning parts. There's the software development, there's cybersecurity, there's mobile app development, there's um, data science and artificial intelligence, product design, product management. So there are, there are different learning tracks you can, you know, um, select and go into um, when you apply for our boot camp. And then finally, I know majority of people on this call have been asking, I've been seeing faces on, oh, this fellowship program, when is it starting? Blah, blah, blah. And maybe you may be clueless. You don't know what this fellowship program is all about. So our fellowship is a year long learning program and it's delivered through six months of training, six months of internship, and there's a mentorship bit part of it. You don't just get trained, you, you get an opportunity to practice what you have learned um, within organizations, we placed for six months to intern with them. And, some of them will have testimonials of people that have, you know, transitioned into full-time roles um, during their internship period. And even beyond that, we don't just leave you. We have women that are, that are mentors that are, you know, paired up with you to train you to, you know, have advisory sessions, have mentorship sessions during the fellowship program. So it's very, very, it's a great experience. And the application is still ongoing. For those of you that maybe ask questions like, oh, what's up, like, when is this application? Is it, is it, is, and can I still apply? You know, do I have the opportunity to apply? Yes, we we were still ongoing. The application is still ongoing. So beyond even learning the test skills, there, there are other you know community based components of the program. There's a meet and greet where you get to physically meet and connect with the fellows from other countries. And mind you, it's not just Nigeria. It's not just South Africa. It's not just Kenya. There are 15 countries for this year. Last year we had five countries, but this year we are going to more countries. And um, people from these countries can apply from the, um, the fellowship program. 
those that are from Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, South Africa, Ethiopia, Democratic Republic of Congo, Tanzania, Algeria, Uganda, Sudan, Morocco, Angola, Mozambique, and Madagascar and Egypt, they can apply for the fellowship program. And um, over time, as the more questions come by, I see that there are a lot of questions on the chat, but I'll go into details on the selection process, on I know I've been seeing questions on the criteria for joining the fellowship program and other bits. Um, so I'll just hand over to Toy. So yeah, I'll allow you to ask the questions and then because if you leave me, I may spend the whole time talking <laughs> with you. <laughs> All right, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. So we actually have a lot of questions. So this is what we're going to do. Um, okay. We might not be able to take each and every one of those questions, but I'm sure one of those questions fits into a question that somebody else has asked, right? So once a question yeah. kind of summarizes the person's questions, then we'll just take that out of the box. So we have a question here that says, for someone who has no background in tech, would they be considered in the application process? Like, would you pick um, such kind of person during the fellowship? Okay, yeah, so um, having a background in tech is an advantage, but like, I think like Nana said is, you, I, no, it was really that said that, that if you want something, you go for it. You have to put in your effort. And if you meet, if you don't really have a background in either of the learning track, but your motivation for joining the program sits well with us, you know, you have the, the, the kind of, the scenario-based questions, your answers, I also count the way you answer the questions. Are you a team player? And if you are willing, like, and for you to say you don't have a background at the point of application, it's okay not to have a background because that's not just the, it's not just the one stage, there are other stages here, right? And so between now and the time that the whole process ends, which is between now and the end of April, please go ahead and start learning. The learning track which you applied for, there's YouTube, there's Google, right? You can go online and start researching and get that background. I, I don't believe, I, I think it's not even right to say I totally don't have a background in tech. You have the internet, to, you know, and you have, you know, you can go online and you can start learning. So for instance, I applied for, let's say I applied for to learn product design. My dear, go online and check, okay, go to YouTube, look for some free courses. There's Udemy, there's Coursera. You can go online and start taking those courses online for free and between now and the next one month, you can get substantial knowledge that will help you because the program is very intensive and it's not really, really beginner friendly. The beginner friendly program we have is the bootcamp, you know, and because you don't want to like be dragging your feet in the program. So please start learning right away. Thank you, Toy. All right, thank you so much, Joy. So we have another question here, which I think is like the 90% question in, in the events today. It says, um, I've registered for the Women Tech Stars Fellowship class of 2023, and I would really like to know when the results will be announced. So maybe you just want to answer that and just, you know, say what the selection process is like so that it covers the next question which I'm, which I'm supposed to ask, you know, when does the program start, how long, and oh, those kind of questions. So thank you so much, Joy. Okay, thank you, Toi. Um, so if you have registered from the fellowship, I know that we have been quiet for a bit. Um, we're, we're still receiving application, like I mentioned earlier. Um, so do not worry, your, your application has been received. No need to register twice, no need to apply twice, no need to be G3 and all that. But at the point of application, after you apply, you see this, um, you, there's this pop-up that comes up to say that your application has been successful. So just let it at that. Um, after the call for application, by the time we're done with calling for application, um, you know, we extended the deadline to accommodate more people to receive more applications because we want, you know, we, we, we want more people. We, we have, we know that more people will take advantage of this opportunity, right? So we just have to extend it a bit. But between now and the second week of April, we will close all applications, we'll stop receiving applications. So please don't wait, don't wait. Don't say, um, you know, uh, there's still time. So just go ahead and, you know, apply if you are yet to. But for those who have applied, just hold on. Screening will begin, you know, in April. We are starting screening immediately. Um, and then we're, we're already we start sorting through the applications. We'll start screening. After the screening, the stage three is an assessment. You'll be taking an assessment test um, for those who scale through the screening phase, the first stage screening. Then, you know, you'll be given an assessment to take, and then you'll be asked to submit a video, a motivational video. So please take note. And this information will also be available on our website and on our social media platform. So look out for that. 
you'll be asked to submit a motivational video, a two minutes video that will just, you know, help us gauge your readiness and gauge your motivation for joining the program. And then um, for the final stage is an interview, the final interview where you'll be interviewed, a live video interview session, you know, with our selection committee to just ensure that you are women textile fellowship material. So those are the stages. And this would hold in the month of April. And by the month of May, the fellowship program, you'll be notified whether you, um, you know, and even by the time you pass the first stage of screening, you'll also be notified. So by the time we start screening and you know processing the applications, you get your notification whether I made it through the first, first stage or not. So please be patient, exercise patient, and use this time to learn, like I said earlier, use this time to learn. Toyin. All right, thank you very much, Joy. So we have a question here, you know, part of the benefits of the Women Texas Fellowship is um, the internship, right? Which places fellows on a six yeah. month um, hands-on experience. So somebody is asking, will the internship be available for all the fellows? Um, what's it going to be like? Are there cases where some fellows will not get placed? Maybe you just want to shed some light on that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the fellowship program, I, I must say that the fellowship program is free free at no cost to you but at a cost to some people right people are funding this program so um it's very important to note that you have to give it your all right it's very important to note that you have to once you are going you know you have to make the decision for yourself and for the future i, I heard when nana was talking and i know some people might be feeling like ah man this the way nana is talking because she knows what she has put into her career and by yeah. then you put in such invest such energy into your career you wouldn't want to make it, you know, to, to see it collapse. So for the internship bids, yes, it's an opportunity that's accessible by all, but for those who are really ready, because um, it's not an automatic thing. You have to pass through the internship criteria. You have to score well. You have to put in your best foot forward and do well in the fellowship, right? So you'll be writing at, at the end of the six months, there's this final examination. You will take the qualifying examination to see whether you pass through to the internship because for instance, if you're not, you know, putting in your all into the program and you do not, you know, um, perform well, your your records do not show full participation, right? Of which we don't even it's not condoned in the program. It's either you're going in fully or not, and that's why we we ensure that we're going through the rigor of, you know, going through the whole selection phase to ensure that we pick only the best of the best, you know, those that are truly ready to develop themselves and, you know, to you know venture into tech. So the internship um, process, you have to, first of all, pass the final examination to qualify for an internship, yeah? And it's a paid internship, it's paid. You'll be interning within tech organizations for six months, and after which you, you can be retained and also you know, apply for other jobs. You can also join the alumni committee where you'll be having access to several of our opportunities to, that'll be provided to you, and you can apply for, you know, to, to get full-time retain, retain So. Um, for the internship, it's, it's, the fellowship is free, the training is free, but the internship, you have to work hard to earn your internship. Thank you so much, Joy. Thank yes, it is. You, you heard that you have to work hard to earn your internship. You have to put in the work to the assessments, the projects, and all of that. So I'll go straight to the next question. Somebody is asking that on the application, it says that we will need pictures and video documentation. Um, and you know, we were asking for consent. Do you agree to this? Do you not agree to this? So does this in any way affect my application? That's what this person is asking. If I selected no, I, I don't want to produce my videos or my pictures does it affect my application and maybe you would just want to say why those pictures and videos are necessary i mean we watched some videos today and i'm sure these are one of the reasons right why we're asked so we just want to answer that thank you Jay. thank you Toy. like you said you know the video fatima mohammed if she hadn't you know given her consent to share her story and i know how i saw the the comments oh, wow amazing this is super you know, if she hadn't given the consent to share her story, other women will still be in the dark. We wouldn't know that this, this opportunity is available for them. So we, we get your videos and pictures for documentary purposes. Um, we don't use it for any other thing. We, we you know, we're on that data protection. We don't use your, we don't expose your data. It's not used for any other thing, but for, you know, success stories and, you know, to document the, the for documentary purposes. Um, and it doesn't really affect your application at this age because even within, after this, this um, application, and by the time you are selected, there are some forms you need to sign your consent forms, the data protection forms, and all that to ensure that you know you agree 
to you know participate fully in the program. For instance, when we go for our meet and greet, you saw the video documentary of the meet and greet that was uh, you know held last year. You know these pictures and videos are collected so that we can be able to you know um, post them and you know create awareness for other ladies about our program. So we don't do anything with your videos. We don't do anything with your pictures that are non-legal. Um, yeah, so that's why. But it's not like a it's not really a criteria. It's not going to make you lose your chances of joining the program, you know, because afterwards we'll still give consent forms to fill. All right, thank you so much, Joy. So I have a question from someone from Kenya, and she says she's seen that most of our graduates, that is the fellowship graduates, the alumni from the fellows, are only um, Nigerians, those that have internships to us, they are mostly Nigerians. So she's asking, are there internship um, spots for women in other countries, especially in Kenya, where she's from? And maybe you just want to say, oh, are there other fellows that are outside Nigeria but have gotten internship slots and all of that? Thank you so much. Thank you very much um, for, for that question, Tony. Um, so I must say that, um, you know, we have quota, right, for each country. And well, for last year, and the majority of our fellows were Nigerians. Well, you know that Nigerians, there are over 200, 200 million um, Nigerians, um, Nigerians, right, in Africa, right? And so the population thing is, is um, to an advantage, what will I say? But that doesn't mean that we didn't have fellows that are from other countries. We had um, 42 fellows from Kenya, you know, that stayed till the end. These are not the people that, you know, got into the program, that, you know, finished the program. 42 fellows from Kenya. And out of these numbers, currently we have placed over, we've placed, the last time I checked, we, we're still placing on, on a rolling basis here. Um, we've placed over 10 fellows. And even from other countries, there's a lady in particular, she's working in Nigeria. There's um, a fellow, I, I won't want to mention her name. There's an Egyptian fellow. There's even a Kenyan fellow, a smart security fellow, that's also working in Nigeria, in a company in Nigeria, right? So some of these, um, Internship opportunities might not be within your country. Um, we have partners in other countries, and they take fellows that are, you know, from different countries to work remotely. So there's an opportunity to work remotely. Some work hybrid. Some work in Nigeria. So it's because we had more Nigerians join the fellowship program, and because of the population size, you know, that's why we had. It, it seems as if we don't have other fellows, but other fellows from other countries are being placed. Um, last year we had fellows from South Africa, from Ghana from Kenya, from Egypt, you know, and these are non-Nigerians that are currently interning within organizations, you know, so there's equal opportunity for all. It's just, yeah. like I said, it's just, it's, it's the hard work you put in that will get you a job at the last, at the end of the day. So I have, don't have the mindset of, oh, I'm from this country. We don't, we do not discriminate against any country. The Women's Texas Initiative is an Pan-African program. And for this year, we're in 15 countries. I mean, the following subsequent years will be going until we get to all African countries by 2030. And mind you, the target is 5 million women, 5 million women, and you have a, you start a chance of going to the program, just putting the handwork. I, you know, this is not a political team where we say, oh, um, I'm favoring this, my sister, I'm favoring this, my brother. No, you have to scale through the um, criteria, you know, the screening criteria and qualify for the program to join the program. Thank you so much, Joy. So there you have it, ladies. Um, it's open, as long as it's open to your country, then yes, you will get an internship slot if you meet the criteria for one. Um, so another question here says that I applied for the program, but I did not get a confirmation email. Um, Joy, I'd just like you to clarify between what response do they get to show that, oh, your registration has been noted and the fact that they, there have been no official emails sent to anyone yet, you know. So just make, make some clarifications in that regard. Thank you. Okay, so like Queen has rightly said, no official email has been sent to anyone yet. We haven't sent any official emails yet. Um, we just started the whole sorting of the applications and we'll begin screening earnestly by next week. So by mid-April, you should be expecting, you know, by mid-April, you should be getting a notification. Yeah, so please let's all be patient um, and calm down. By the time you submit your applications, you get a response and the response says this i'm going to read out the response it says hello future women texas fellow thank you for your application for the first stage of the women texas fellowship class of 2023 this message confirms that you have we have received your application and it will be reviewed soon kindly stay glued to our social media platforms as we will provide updates on the status of our applications received 
West Vegas Women Texas Programs Team. So our social media platforms, I'll just call them out. At Instagram, we're tech for dev. Facebook, we're tech for dev. Twitter, we're tech for dev. HQ, LinkedIn, we're tech for dev. So please follow us on social media and stay glued. Like, follow us. Whatever we are doing, we are very, you know, we're very clear. We post online. You see the updates online. We share the updates online. And we'll send emails once we start screening applications, right? Because we can't, um, you, so you can imagine receiving over, like Dura said, over 12,000, I think it's now about 13,000 plus applications, you know, sending emails for everyone to say, oh, your application has been received, you know, it's not automated that way, but it's something I was, was striving to do and for subsequent program, but currently now, you just have that notification letting you know that your application was successfully received, right? Um, when we start screening, you'll, you'll be sure to get an email, whether you're moving to the next stage or not, so keep your fingers crossed and keep on learning. Thank you, Toei. All right, thank you, Joy. So another question, because we're really running out of time, and I just want to ensure you know we're able to take as much as we can. Another question says that will the fellowship program involve me being physical? Like, would there be any point in the program where I'd have to be physically present for a class or for a project or for something? And it, like, if it's going to be hybrid, virtual, like, would you just say what the program is going to be like, like the structure? Okay, thank you. Um, like I mentioned earlier, there are various components of the program, right? There's the training component. The, comp the training component is strictly virtual. We learn online. Um, there's no facilitator and no program personnel will tell you, oh, my meets me at so-and-so -so venue. We're having a class there. Please, that's not, our trainings are virtual. We don't have, you know, on-site training. And if we're having on-site, we'll let you know. But right now, as I know it, and as we did last year, the program the training was virtual. The meet and greet and the community engagement where you go for the, you know, the tech, the tech girls drive is physical, right? So you'll be informed the, the location for the meet and greet will be announced, you know, and you've been pre-informed so that you can go there and have a meet and greet, meet up with other fellows. That's a physical component. The community engagement where you go to schools to sensitize other girls, advocacy part, you know, sensitize young girls about, you know, STEM, making STEM career choices is also physical. Um, then the internship could be remote, could be hybrid, and could be physical, depending on the company in question. Some companies, you know, prefer their um, employers to come to work from the office, right? Um, while some others, you know, would prefer a hybrid where you come twice or thrice a week, um, and then some are fully remote, you, have, you work online. So as the case may be, this is not detected, it's not, we're not detecting this. It depends on the organization you are being placed on internship, right? And, and the opportunity that presents itself at that moment, right? But the training is virtual. We don't have physical trainings at the moment. Thank you so much, Joy. So another question says, um, okay, I have not been to any Women Texas program, so I did not take it. Oh, I'm here now. Do I apply again to correct this? I mean, I'm sure she means that. Oh, now she has attended the Open Day, which is a women textiles program. So, can she fill the form again to correct that? And I just feel we should tie this to other questions. Oh, I submitted the wrong detail. I did this, I do that. Is, is there an avenue for me to make corrections or submit another um, entry? So. So I, I think this question is about the pool that was um, launched. I, I think you need to be clarified. If it's about the pool, we'll uh, relaunch the pool after this EMA session. Um, but if you have not, um, if you, if you, you, you know, you, you think that you are not, you've not participated in any women Texas program and then you've attended the open day, it doesn't matter. It's not like a major criteria for selection. So you got to worry yourself about it. But if it's about the pool, just hold on. We relaunch the pool after the EMA session. So you have to, you get the chance to pull again. Okay. Yes, um, I wanted you to also answer the fact that some people made some mistakes during um, the application process. You know, maybe they wanted to select cybersecurity and then they selected product management or product design or any of those other learning tracks. Um, are they allowed to edit those entries? I mean, I also have some questions here like, oh, I did not answer this, I did not answer that, I did not answer it the way I wanted to. I you know people are just scared like, oh, does it affect my chances? Does it not? So is there an avenue for such corrections? Okay, now, um, so I would like to answer this in two parts. Um, you know, when you feel, that's whenever you are feeling an application, right, and going forward, right, 
um, just take your time to, you know, go through the questions, don't be in a haste, um, so that you don't, you know, make mistakes. Because so now the, re the reason why we say that is because if you now fail twice or fail tries or four times and all that, when the community starts screening, they would, when they see multiple, so for me, what, 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 what um, is actually done before we start screening, when we start sorting, while sorting, when we see multiple entries, we'll delete it to then know the actual number of people that applied, right? So at the end of the day, out of the over 13,000 people that applied, right, by the time we do that sorting, we'll then get a number of people. So imagine when um, you filled multiple, like 20 times or 15 times, you kept on submitting application, and we deleted the one, because we delete, when you see multiple names, just delete, Nobody will now, nobody will start going through at that moment. Nobody starts start the actual screening at that moment. Just delete other selection and leave one, right? So that's why you just have to take your time and apply, you know, um, so that you don't get to, you know, make mistake or rush it. So, but if you chose a different learning track from the one you actually want to do, do not worry. During the orientation, you get to learn more about the program and you have a chance to, because make up your mind because it's, for us, it's a one-year journey, right? We wouldn't want a situation where you chose something because you can't even commit into the program. You can't start because this is an opportunity that has been given to you. You, By the time I give you the opportunity, we're denying 1,000 others the opportunity, right? Because you have been, you know, you've gone through the rigorous process of selection and you made it to the final stage. At that point, you should know what you want to do. So, I just hope you scale through the um, first stage, second stage of screening. At that final interview, you would have the chance to now decide, okay, do you really want to go into this learning track and why? Those are the core questions you ask during the final interview to be sure that that's what you really want, right? You know, so that, that's when you now, you know, make up your mind and say, okay, this is what I really want to do. But right now, don't worry about that. It's not really very, very, it's not really that deep, right? At the point of screening, when we get to the final stage of selection, you will then decide if you deserve this opportunity or not. Thank you so much, Joy. So another question says, um, is is there an age limit? Like, is there is there an age criteria for those being selected? Can maybe I'm twelve or I'm seventy? Um, do I have a spot in the fellowship? So the age brackets we consider for the fellowship program is between 16 to 40, yes. Why? Because, you know, at this point, you are more, you know, alert, you are, you are valuable, like you can be, you can easily learn new things, right? You are still sharp. But when you are like older than, well, I know I'm not saying that there are some people that, you know, outstanding people that, you know, at 45, at 60, they are still agile, they are still learning, they're still getting skills. But the thing is, because there's an internship accrued to this, there's an internship placement attached to this, right? If you are too old, some organizations might not want people that are, you know, you know, too old, right, for an internship. You know, there's like an age range where they're taking intern, except it's a full-time role, right? Um, and then if you are too young, you know, like in Nigeria, we've gotten, you know, situations where some of our partners are like, oh, they want people that are, are done with their NYSC, their National Youth Service Corps, so that they can be retained and transition into to role. So, you know, organizations don't want a situation where you are intern and, they, and you say, oh, I have to go and write my WAEC, you know, West African examination, you know, council examination. I need to go and write my um, WAEC. I need to go and write this examination. I need to go to school, you know. Most companies wouldn't want that. And because there's an internship placement accrued to it, we just want it to be between this age range. But um, in a situation where your you 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 your age you know exceeds this limit or is not within this limit, it should take a very outstanding application to actually scale through the lenses, like you know, to dodge lenses of the screening committee, it, it really take a very, 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 you know, good application. Let's say you're a lucky one, but usually it's between that age range. Thank you so much, Joy. So I'm just going to ask the next question here, which says, this is my third time of applying and I've, I've not gotten picked yet. Is there any priority to get picked? Um, maybe you just want to breeze through the okay, criteria, so like three saying... years and all of that. Okay, so by saying third time of applying, this is the second time we're having a fellowship program. Does this mean that this person has applied for this particular fellowship three times? 
you can't have a third time when is this just a second program, right? The first program was last year, and we piloted in five countries in Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, South Africa, and Egypt. And this year, we're in 15 countries, right? So this is the second application. So please, this is from applying multiple times. Like I said, it might be the good application, the one that is excellent to you, that has been, you know, that, that will be deleted when the sorting is over. So please don't apply multiple times. This is because I'm saying this because that is out, out of experience. There are cases like this that we have encountered, right? Um, so please, because people then, at the point of orientation, and we've had people say, oh, this is not the, the, the course I applied for. And I'm like, we go through your details and we even show you, oh, this is the course you applied for, right? So please, let's just be mindful. Before you even apply for any program, go online, go and read. What is product design? What is um, cyber security? You know, try and, you know, um, know if, should I be my most preferred? Should I be my, be my second most preferred choice of application? You know, so that you, you be mindful um, during the application stage. Okay, yeah, you want right, to you. Um, breeze through the criteria. So before I do that, um, I may not really go into details, right? Details, um, yes. Before, yeah, but I'll just want to tell you who an ideal fellow is. An ideal fellow, right, is an African woman who embraces empathy, humility, and inclusion as guiding values. She's a self-starter who is committed to learn with and supports a network of culturally distinct women. She's committed to collaborate in the development of herself and continent through her digital skills acquired from the fellowship program. In addition to these guiding values and traits, we're looking for intellectual rigor, vision, research skills, curiosity, openness, kindness, and much more. Women Texas Fellow is a woman who will champion inclusion and equality in the tech ecosystem. She is willing to dedicate time. So ask yourself, as I'm calling out all these things, please ask yourself, <laughs> are you willing to dedicate one year? Are you committed? Are you hardworking? Are you hardworking? Because it takes a lot of hard work because um, there are projects to be engaging in group projects and in mini projects, you'll be engaging in your, your weekly practical assessments, there are quizzes, you know, so it's a very rigorous process, you have to be committed, you have to be hardworking, it's not for a lazy woman, you know, because it doesn't come easy, yes, it's free, you're not paying for the program, but you have to do the work to become excellent, right, because I tell for them, we believe in excellence, we believe in graduating only the best of the best, and even taking in only the best of the best, Right, so you have to be hardworking, you have to be a team player because a lot of team projects, group projects, you're working together with team. And there are women from different countries, right? You know, so you have to be able to embrace community, you know, and it's why tech as a propeller for your future. Do you see tech as a propeller for your future, right? So these are the things we're looking at when we, when we go through the screening um, process. So um, during the first day screening, well, we're going to be ascertaining if you're able to dedicate time to the program, if you're willing to dedicate time to the program, if you're a hard worker, if you're a team player, based on the answer, the responses you submit. So I hope you submitted a very convincing scenario where you're able to work in a team, be able to convince us, um, you know, your motivational statement as well. What kind of, you know, statement did you put there? Is it well written? You know, why should we give you this opportunity? Why should you be selected and not any other woman out there? You know, um, what are your plans after the training? What do you plan to do with the skill you acquire from the training? These are the criteria, these are the things we're looking out for. How do you, you know, picture yourself in the next two years? What do you intend to do? How do you handle difficult challenges? How do you resolve conflicts? Um, what's the perception of success? What does success mean to you? Does success mean that, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, you, you just you just acquire tech and that all, that's all, you just want to be redundant with these skills. Those are the things we watch out for when screening, making, you know, our choices and selecting the candidates that will make it to the assessment and motivational video submission stage. Thank you so much, Joy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so somebody is asking, right, how much time, you know, you talked about time, how that you have to um, be able to devote your time and all of that. For someone who is probably a student or has a job already, or somebody just wants to know how much time every day would I need to dedicate? Like, can you just give an average of how many hours every day somebody would need to dedicate um, to the program? Okay, um, so when it comes to time, 
um, you should, I think there's a question that says, do you have access to adequate internet for a minimum of 30 hours weekly? I think that should give you an idea of, you know, number of the hours you should commit a week, right? So lectures, classes hold for four hours daily, hmm? um, you know, four hours of lecture daily. And, you know, I, you know, I mentioned that there's the assessment, the weekly practical tasks that be given, you know, to take home and do. So over the weekend, you still have to, you know, commit to, to do your, your um, working on your practical tasks that have been assigned to you, working on your project, you know, and the other activities that are, you know, done outside of class. So 30 hours every week is a, the, the time you should commit and four hours daily. So do the mathematics, there are five working days in a week, that's 20 hours for weekdays, and then 10 hours over the weekend. So give and take, well, I'm not saying after four hours of lecture, you don't go back to revise. You still have to go back and revise. So just be available for 30 hours a week, committed hours a week um, to the program. Average of, let's say, five hours every day. So like, because sincerely, it's not just what you are taught in class. If you don't practice, I know there's this quote that says, practice makes perfect. You still have to perfect. practice, do your homework yourself, and, you know, put in the effort. All right, thank you so much, Joyce. So just two questions and we'll wrap it up. And for some of those questions that we cannot answer, we'll be taking other questions on our social media platform. So please endeavor to follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, so that you're just updated on all, all information that goes out, right? Um, so if I was a good star, if I have been to boot camp, you know, one of those intermediate programs, does it increase my chances in the fellowship application? And then lastly, if I don't have a laptop, do I still stand a chance in the fellowship program? So just those two questions and then we'll call it a day. Thank you, Joy. You're welcome. Um, so if you were a boot star, right, that's your own advantage because of the skills, the knowledge you have gained. Um, it gives you an edge. So for instance, someone, for instance, you've gone through a software development bootcamp and then someone that is just hearing HTML and CSS. And mind you, this, like I said, the curriculum, I'd also like to go through, like, quickly, because I saw a question about the curriculum, um, whether Courtney was going to be taught in mobile app development. I'll just add that, please. Permit me. So if you've gone through the bootcamp program, it would be to your advantage because you have, you'll be at a higher ground, right? You, you know, um, be able to um, understand certain terms. Although, see, don't undermine other applicants that have not gone through any of that for their program. That doesn't mean that they've not gone through other programs that are not even, you know, in the women um, that are not women Texas program or they're not reading on their own. So don't be, don't just say, oh, I've gone to the bootcamp. When they see that I have gone to the bootcamp, it's give me a leverage. No, it's just for your own advantage. It will just help you, you know, understand the things being taught better. Um, then you start, you add, you know, um, you know, you grab small that someone that have not gone through, that does not have a background knowledge in that particular um, track of study, right? And if you do not have a laptop, does it mean you'll be sent out of the program? Well, for those who, for the, those in the pilot class last year, some people had to drop off because of their learning tools. Um, but, but this year we're trying to provide learning tools, um, internet bundles, device loans and scholarships um, for those who scale through, like, but you have to scale through the application. You know, if you scale through, if you, you your, the other things, you meet other criteria and it's just a device that is standing between your chances of going to the program, we'll try to see how to get, you know, you to apply for the, the device loan, you know, how to help you as, uh, assess in, in, um, internet bundles and all that and scholarships who are trying to, you know, partner with certain organizations to make this possible for you, but you still have to apply and pass through that um, process too. But it will be easier if you have a laptop, or if you do not, that shouldn't discourage you to still apply um, for the program. And I just hope you scale through the application stage. We want more women to, you know, assess technical skills, digital skills. We don't want a laptop to, you know, stand between you and your dream. Um, Twin, please permit me to go through the um, learning track and the things that you Yes, you can. Yeah. Yes, thank you. So I'll just quickly summarize for each of the learning tracks. So um, 3D and mixed reality, I'll start from that, um, AR and VR. The model content you'll be learning, you'll be introduced to headsets, um, gaming engineer, gaming engines, introduction to 3D modeling using Blender, introduction to C++, Blender, understanding the interface, creating and editing 3D components, physics and recasting, 
simulation, collision, materials and texturing, rendering, rigging, animation, Unreal Engine, introduction to blueprints, gameplay, C++ and Unreal Engine, Visual Studio, adding C++ code, capstone projects, and then the final exam. That's what you'll be covering um, over six modules. Um, I know that some of these are strange to you, but if you have the interest and you should already go and start learning about this, go and start doing your research and reading up about this. Um, blockchain technology, um, over 16 weeks, you'll be learning um, blockchain fundamentals, decentralization, ledger, distributed ledgers and consensus, Bitcoin and Ethereum, smart contracts and the Ethereum virtual machine, decentralization applications, transactions, wallets and hashing, blockchain architecture, security and maintenance, solidity, Web3.js and browser smart contract interaction, capstone project, and then your final exam. So the things you'll be doing um, in the blockchain technology learning track, cybersecurity, you've been introduced to cybersecurity, CIA triad, governance, risk analysis, and risk mitigation, compliance, business continuity planning, disaster recovery, line of server configuration, login, bash scripting and programming, Windows server configuration, architecture operations and security, network security, wireshark and traffic analysis, email security, cryptography and encryption, pulse scanning, cloud security and virtualization, Splunk, monitoring and logging, incident response, forensics, data extraction and recovery, um, Bob suite, vulnerabilities and pay payloads, SQL injections, web shells, file inclusion and command injection vulnerabilities, penetration testing, execution standard, search exploit and meta exploit, Zen map, Fibotis network security plus CEH. These are things that you'll be, I'm not really going into details of the curriculum. I'm just giving you an overview of the things you've been learning. Um, data science and artificial intelligence, you'll be learning Microsoft Excel, DBA script, statistics modeling, Python, APIs, JSON, NumPy, um, Panda, Smart Plot Lead, Beautiful Soup, Beautiful Soup, <laughs> SQL, <laughs> My SQL, No SQL, MongoDB, um, Microsoft SQL, ETL Process, Power BI, Tableau, Paddle, Machine Learning. Um, for those in the mobile app um, at development, You'll be learning mobile development, Android Studio, Java development, Kids, Swift, Kotlin, React Native, Flutter, Java, Android Studio, Kotlin, Swift, Flutter, and then you do it, uh, um, have some projects. Product designers will be learning UX design thinking, user-centered design research, empathy and users, UX interviewing, um, insights, synthesis, and personal creation, decision mapping, prototyping, and user testing, user interaction, user interface, and affordance, in vision and Figma, project management and tools, user center design, accessibility and usability, UI patterns and libraries, atomic design, Adobe XD, um, prototype, heuristic, usability and UI interactions, continuity and branding in UI UX, iconography, GitHub, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and jQuery. For those in product management track, expect to learn business analysis fundamentals, the requirements gathering, user case creation, um, test case development, the project management life cycle, triple constraint theory, integration management, um, 10 um, project management book knowledge areas, waterfall projects and tools, introduction to agile methodology, scrum methodology, Kanban method, Agile project initiation, Agile project management, Agile project execution, traditional and um, vast Agile methodologies, hybrid project management, work breakdown structure, operational metrics, tracking operational service level agreements, from frameworks and applications, ah, I'm almost done. Software development, back end, for those who have joined the back end track, you'll learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript language, C sharp introduction, program structure, object oriented programming. No JS, no the JS for concept classes, structures, and records, string interpolation, arrays, and indexes. Then finally, for those in the front end development track, you'll be learning HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, 
books and routine, authentication, API consumption, state management, accessibility, GSX index, fragments, TypeScript, React Native. My dears, don't be scared. I know this, this whole jargons, right? They look really scary and they sound, oh my God, is this what I want to do with my life? Yes. Um, in the next one year, you'll be like Nana, you'll be like, you know, Rad, Rade, you'll be yeah. like Desha coming up to speak at open days. And beyond that, you even gain access to, you know, opportunities that are beyond you, beyond your imaginations. And even the website are just like an opening door for you, like just the first steps to lots more you can achieve in the tech space. So be open-minded, we have good facilitators. Trust me, our facilitators are not coming to joke. They're no jokers and they are going to be teaching you a lot. And your one year will be what is, I don't know if you'll be experts, you'll be professionals, you'll you, you do better. Okay. Yes, Joy, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, so, thank you so very much. Of this session will be available. You can then listen to the recording at a later time um, so that you can you know, listen to all this over and over again. Okay. All right, ladies, thank you so very much. Thank you, Joy. I'm sure um, we're able to take most of your questions. If not all, I'm sure we're able to cover 90% of your questions, right? So thank you so very much for having, um, for making our time to listen to us. So quickly, I'll be launching the poll again, but this time around, it's just for one minute, please just one minute for those of us that missed the poll. So I'm going to launch the poll now. And after that, um, I have a colleague on the call, Usman, who's going to come on here to give us a, a brief announcement and all of that. And please don't forget to follow us on social media, to follow our social media handles. Most of the questions that were not captured here, you can ask them, send a DM to our social media handles, and they'll be there to give you answers, PD answers, trust me. All right, so I'll be launching the poll in three, two, one, and I just want us to just um, take a minute to just fill it. Yes. All right. So the poll is up and it's just going to take a minute. It's already three seconds down. So please um, let's do well to fill it on time. For those of us that missed it, even if you have filled before, right, you can just take it again so that we'll have um, ample results. Then after the poll, Usman is going to come up to give the announcement and you know, we'll call it a day. So while we are taking the poll, I just want to emphasize that the open day is not just for, um, it's not a one, one month thing, like just because you are here this month does not mean you should not come again next month. And I would really advise that you come again next month. I mean, for those that were here for the panel session, you would agree with me that it was super packed. We learned a lot from the speakers. We learned so much from the speakers, right? And so we hope to see you again next month, April, the last month of April. I think that's um, the last Thursday in the month of April, that's 28. Um, for everybody that registered for this event, we'll send you an email to send a link for the next registration. Thank you so much, guys. I can see Mary Jane, Nawal, Esther, Ifen, you are all saying they have filled the poll. All right, it's over one minute now, so I'm just going to end, um, end the poll here. Okay, let's just push it a bit so um 70 percent all right so i'm going to end the poll here thank you so very much usman over to you hi thank you very much i'm tony and um it's been an amazing session so far and i really want to uh you know congratulate everyone who was on the call during the you know session and the eme session you know and if there's something i'll be taking home from all that has been said. I mean, and I mentioned that I should tap into your girl power. So I think I'll be tapping into my own, you know, boy power or man power, so to say. So, <laughs> so I mean, uh, these 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 um, women were amazing, and uh, their stories are heartwarming. And you know, uh, it's just very important that we put into we put in the you know extra efforts that that we need um, to you know to be able to excel. Uh, so, um, basically, I am just here to inform you that, yeah, Tech for Day, we are having the Women's Tech Stars program. Uh, however, the Women's Tech Stars program is not just the only program we have. We have programs, um, you know, every now and then. But how do you hear about this program? It's for you to be able to, like, follow us on our social media and do platforms and, um, you know, uh, you know, get up, be up to date on our information, turn on your post notification. So, anytime we make a post, you'll be the first to hear about it. So I'm, I'm uh, dropping the um, social media handles again. So if you are not following us, this is the right time for you to follow us. Follow us 
on Instagram at Tech for Dev, Twitter, Tech for Dev HQ, Facebook, Tech for Dev, LinkedIn, Tech for Dev. Uh, follow us, turn on the post notification, send us DMs. Uh, you know, um, we, we receive a lot of DMs, and then um, if you have sent your message and uh, you, we are yet to respond to you, don't be, don't, don't be, don't be scared or don't think we are ignoring you. We will definitely respond to your DMs. Just send your DM, and you know, we are going to respond to you. Send us mails. Send us, you know, we are we are a community, you know, bridging, you know, uh, uh, the um, technological ecosystem. And we give so much importance to everybody who wants to learn tech, tech uh, skill and want to advance trade. So please always reach out to us, and um, uh, we we are always going to be uh, you know there for you. Thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> I can see a lot of feedback. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, that will be all for it. And as um, Tony has said and Joy has said earlier, the Women Tech Stars Fellowship is currently ongoing. Uh, we are still is um, receiving applications. So tell your friends. Tell your family, tell your colleagues, you know, tell your partners, tell everybody, you know, let them let them apply for the Women Tech Stars Fellowship. It's a, it's a transformational program and it's a program that has changed lots of lives. I mean, across I mean, Africa. And then um, the good thing is we are expanding to not just we are we are expanding to um, beyond the five African countries that we had before into 15 countries um, now. Thank you all very much, and I wish you all uh, a very nice. Um, uh, nice evening. It's evening here in Nigeria. I don't know, uh, you know, the times when we are in other countries. Thank you very much and have a good day. All right. Thank you, everyone. Let's call it a day. Bye bye. See you next month.